Welcome back to the AL.com Film Room. I'm John Parker Wilson, joined by Cole Kubik, our Auburn analyst. This week we're going to be breaking down the Western Carolina game as well as the Sanford game. And going into this game, this Iron Bowl week, Cole, what are your thoughts on coming off kind of a lesser opponent getting ready for the big game this week? Yeah, it's a tough thing to do because both of these teams coming off huge games before they played these FCS opponents. And then, of course, the Iron Bowl looms the next week. I've had a lot of people ask me, especially when it comes to the Alabama-Western Carolina game, man, so many guys getting hurt. Why do we get these guys hurt? My answer to that is the easiest way to get hurt is to not be going full speed. And the easiest way to look bad is to not go full speed. And I think you saw the Auburn kids look bad because they weren't going full speed. And some of the Alabama kids maybe get banged up because they weren't going full speed in those FCS contests. Yeah, totally. I think the biggest thing with these games is try to rest the guys that are hurt and get out of the game uh, healthy. It wasn't the case for Alabama and Auburn kind of kind of looked a little sloppy too. So a lot of a lot of going to practice this week. Uh, let's take a look at the film, see where we did good this game, see where we kind of struggled, and see where see, see where we're going with the Iron Bowl. All right, first play early in the game right here for Western Carolina, taking a shot, taking advantage of the long ball. And I think what happens here is, is a play we're going to see from Auburn. Nick Perry gets out of uh, alignment right here. Cyrus Jones is on island one-on-one. We can see it from the end zone is Nick Perry coming down and really, really going after the quarterback run, gets lost, and in the, in the quarterback is one-on-one. So right here we can see the quarterback pulling up. He can either run. He sees the big guy, so obviously he wants to throw. And Nick Perry is screaming up here trying to cover the run. Cole, what do you think about You've seen Auburn run this play coming, coming downhill. Uh, what do you think we're going to see from the Tigers right here? Yeah, it's a very similar play. You've, you've got a bit of an exchange there with Trey DePriest and Jared Greed. You see Reed kind of crashing down and then coming around. Is that defensive end right there, 90, how he comes around. So it's a, almost a little bit of a game there between the defensive tackle and defensive end. And DePriest, a nice job taking that tight end and flow. But like you mentioned, John Parker, that play action fake is what's drawing the safety down, and that opens up the one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. Something Auburn's going to try to do a lot of. I I think if there is a weakness that Auburn has an opportunity to exploit, it's finding ways to get these corners in one-on-ones. And Sammy Coates, if Duke Williams is back, taking some shots down the field. I really loved what Nick Saban said in his press conference today, talking about motions, play actions. He said, you know, what they like to do is camouflage what they're really trying to do with motions and with play actions. And you see linebackers bite, safety bites, and that gives you an opportunity to just take a chance, go with your one-on-one, try to hit a playmaker down the field. Yeah, and I think from Alabama, the, the secondary aspect, it's been hot and cold. And I think with Auburn's receivers coming, if Duke Williams can be healthy, it's going to be a matchup we'll be looking for it all day. All right, still in the first quarter, we see Amara Cooper run a really good route to get open, but unfortunately he gets banged up. And I think we've seen this over and over from Lane Kiffin, though, is putting Amari Cooper in a different spot to make plays. Right here he's in the slot and does a great job of running a good route. Um, really had, had this nickel back. Messed up, turned around a bunch. We can see him run, run a quick little slant. And what he does a good job of is getting this guy's hips turned. So right now, when he's going, he can run a seam. He can go to the middle. Or what he does here is go to the corner. And the, the, the nickel guy is really, really out of source. So he does a good job of stacking him. Blake Sims delivers a good ball, but what we don't like to see here is getting hurt. Like we said earlier, not going full speed, not knowing if he should go out of bounds, stay in bounds, getting hurt. Um, you know, from the injury report we've heard, he should be all right, but still something we're going to have to keep an eye on going, going into this week. I think the unfortunate part of that there is he steps out before he takes a shot on the knee. And if you can, run, run that back to the wall. I just want to ask you this because you have a quarterback's eyes and it's a little bit different. So from a quarterback's perspective, let, let's say you've got this guy right here and you know what he's capable of. Tell, tell the viewers, tell me, what, what do you not want to see out here? What, what do you not want to see over your go-to guy, Amari Cooper? What's going to make you think pre-snap as a quarterback, okay, I might want to stay away from him on this play? I think the biggest thing that, that is working in our favor is he's so close to the line of scrimmage. So he's only two yards off the line of scrimmage. And even if there, there is a safety over top, he's going to be really deep. So right now, pre-staff alignment, I think we've got a pretty good shot. The cornerback's almost 10 yards off. So just the matchup, one, the two-on-two two out here, I think we've got a good shot pre-snap. And then once the ball snapped, you know, Amari just does what he does best, and that's getting open. I think the, the pre-snap with all the linemen walking around up, up top, they're a little, little out of whack to start off the play and I think Blake Sims knows this take advantage of it knows he's going to go uh, tomorrow as soon as the ball snapped and, and just reads him out the whole play 
Okay, fourth and one right here. Second quarter starting to run out, and it's a big time in the game. We don't want to kick a field goal. We're going to go for it and see what happens. And I think right here with the cover zero, we see – each cornerback lined up man-to-man, -man. so that means the defense is selling out for the run. They think it's going to be a run, and they crash hard. And once Derrick Henry gets to the second level, he's off to the races. We see 22 in great position. He's got the edge concealed, and Derrick Henry just does a good job of beating the corner. 22 really didn't know if he wanted to go inside or outside, and Derrick beats at the corner, uh, you know, Guns blazing all the way to the end zone. Cole, let's talk about this cover zero and the offensive lineman's blocking schemes when you see everybody in the box. We've got – We've got nine guys coming down in the box, and, and what you're thinking, a block in the edge right here. Yeah, in, inside, outside, honestly, I don't think it matters. I, just, I don't think 22 wants anything to do with 27, to be honest with you. What you're going to see is a little crash right here by the end man on the line of scrimmage. you got a five-man front. So when this defensive end crashes, he doesn't have contain anymore. That's where 22 is going to come down. He has contain. Basically, he's the last – resort out here to the outside. So what you can't do is come upfield and get your shoulders turned and give somebody the edge. Give that running back the corner. You'll see 22, he comes up. Got to keep the shoulders square so you can play flat down the line of scrimmage. Hopefully push this back to the outside. Maybe get some help from a corner. Maybe run Derrick Henry outside. But when he comes up and gets those shoulders turned, plays a little over aggressive, you'll see it really doesn't take a whole lot for Derrick Henry to make extra yards on this play. And like you said, cover zero, there's no safety. Get to the second level and you're gone. So it's just really off to the races there. A guy that big shouldn't be able to run that fast. But – it's just the way that it goes sometimes. And you great look here. You see four crash down, 22. Shoulder square, play outside. He gets his shoulder square. He turns inside. Got to force that run back inside to the rest of the defense. Gives up the corner. Derrick Henry fast enough to make a play. Yeah, he's got contained. I think he just didn't want any part of the big Derrick Henry coming <laughs> on the outside. I don't think I would either. No. So. All right, later on the same drive after that fourth down conversion, we see Derrick Henry uh, second and goal right here, catch a touchdown pass. I think – a great thing right here Blake Sims does is recognize the coverage and sees what's going on. Immediately, we've got man coverage by the corner, and the safety is going to fly over top. Once he does that, he's got eyes on the linebacker right here, knowing he's, he's got Derrick Henry man coverage one-on-one. -on -one. one of the hardest things to do as a linebacker is to cover this one-on-one. -on -one. He's got no safety help. He knows he's on an island. Blake does a good job of keeping his eyes outside. Derrick does a good, good job of sticking his foot and getting a feel for the touchdown. Cole, we've seen a little bit of this from Auburn running the slant routes. We see Derrick Henry run a good route here. You know, what, what do you think about this, the, the route running and kind of the different scheme from Alabama? Well, it's one thing that's given Auburn some problems this season, especially in short yardage situations. Some of those one-on-ones and angle routes, slant routes down near the goal line. They've had some issues with it. Texas A&M scored a couple touchdowns on this. South Carolina had success with this. Georgia hit a couple of these as well, hit one for a touchdown. So when you get down inside the red zone, this is going to be something that I expect Lane Kiffin and Alabama to attempt to do. Find a one-on-one, -on -one, wherever it is, put the safety in a bad situation, and then just try to get some of those quick hitting routes where your playmates can go make a play. It's a nice job on the interior of the offensive line right here. A little tackle, tackle twist right there. You see those two guys going to kind of go in, come around. Middle three picks it up nicely. It's four on five. You should never give up pressure there. Doesn't help in 48 and 49 and 98 kind of run into each other a little bit. That's never the best thing. But nonetheless, it's nice execution from Blake Sims and Derrick Henry. Yeah, I think a good thing Blake does right here is recognize the defense, see the coverage, and throw a good ball to Derrick. This is an easy route to, to hit. The, the running back's running upfield. If you throw it a little bit behind, the linebacker can knock it down. So a good read, good throw, going in for the touchdown right before half. First quarter, second down right here. We see Auburn trying to take a shot downfield. Tell me what you see from Nick Marshall right here, kind of forcing the ball and throw to interception early in the game. Well, it, Gus Malzahn is going to take some chances. And the crazy thing about this, John Parker, is so many of these have worked for Auburn this year. You think back to Ole Miss, Sammy Coates, a couple deep plays. You think back to the LSU game, a couple bombs that really Auburn probably had no business coming away with, and they end up getting huge chunks of yardage. Nothing real different here, kind of a Statue of Liberty play. The outside zone plays, jet sweeps have really been working. Second half of the season, let's go ahead and fake that. Draw some of these linebackers, maybe draw safety in. Who you don't draw in is this guy, which is what gives you some double coverage back deep. I think Nick Marshall holds this ball just a little bit long, maybe thinking that he's got the arm to out throw this coverage. But if you watch late, he's going to get a little bit of pressure right here. Big boy in the middle is going to split. 
the right guard and right tackle late, maybe force a little bit of an errant pass by Nick Marshall. We'll just watch how this play develops. Fake the jet sweep. Nice play action to hold that ball back, though. You see a little bit of pressure come late. Bottom line, ball's just underthrown. You're the quarterback. You can tell me if you think he holds it too long. Play has plenty of time to develop. There's the route right there, but you see that safety was never really truly pulled up to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and I think with a slow play fake and then taking a five-step drop along with two hitches, you've got no chance to get the ball. Even if you threw the perfect ball, it, it, the, the receiver is going to outrun it. He's going to be waiting for it, and the safety's back there playing center field. I think the timing wasn't there, and when that happens, the time is not there. You just got to get it down to a back and move on to the next play. All right, we see a nice touchdown run from Quan Ray right here. Speed sweep, we've seen so many times at Auburn. Break this down a little further and talk about uh, the blocking up front. And then what I love to see is the, is the guys blocking downfield, which eventually springs it for the touchdown. Yeah, extra effort downfield, John Parker. Damian Craig's done such a nice job with these wide receivers. And one kid that he's got a lot of negativity this year, Brandon Fultz, tight end. Matt and I talked about him a few weeks ago. Going to have a really nice block here. Cam Bernardus Payne is going to come downfield and get a nice block. And it's just that jet sweep. The big advantage here for Auburn is 15 is going to realign to the strength. Watch him take himself out of the play. He's going to slant inside, obviously playing right into the hands of the play call that Auburn has dialed up to Quan Bray. There's the block from Brandon Fultz. There's the block from Cameron Artis Payne. And a really nice run from Quan Bray. Did a good job blocking downfield. Love to see that right here. Um, Quan Bray showing the wheels right here. Getting it in turn of the corner, and he's gone once he, once he gets the corner. Yeah, and we'll go back to this, to this close angle here, and you'll see we talked about 15, how he slants down. Now he's going to shove Sean Coleman 72, and it feels good, and it's all cool when you shove a lineman, they fall down, and you say, yeah, I knocked the lineman down. But you'll see he shoves 72, well, you got your back turned to the play. So any offensive lineman will allow that to happen if it's going to give up a touchdown. Yep, one step and he's gone. That, that beats the play, and he's off to the races. Auburn's defense making huge play right here with a little pressure up front, causing an interception. I think something they're going to have to have big time against Alabama is forcing the turnover. Well, and you're going to have to get to Blake Sims and affect the pocket and affect the passer, or else we saw – when we looked at Alabama's offense a little bit earlier, they're going to be able to make some plays. One thing that Auburn has really lacked is the ability to get a pass rush with four up front. Nice game here. Montrevious Adams is going to be first through. Gamel President is going to come back underneath. Almost giving it away with that alignment a little bit. A little bit tight down on the tackle there. You don't want to give that pre-snap read away, but this late in the game, third and long, you know you're going to have a situation to tee off and go after. But watch the twist here. Really forces the quarterback get rid of the football, leave the pocket, and obviously going to be an inaccurate pass. There's the twist. Pressure inside. Got to get out of the pocket. And then, of course, Jones is going to come in, tip that football. Chris Frost in nice position to make a play. We'll get a look at it here from the back angle. See a pressure inside. Got to get out of the pocket. Breaks on the football a little bit late, even though not able to come up with the pick. Chris Frost right there in position to make a play. Going to have to force some turnovers against Alabama. And since midseason, they haven't done it a lot. But Auburn hadn't gotten pass rush like that a lot. So two things that I think you see on this play, Auburn's going to have to do against Alabama to have success. Yeah, and I think the big thing is rushing with four guys. Because they rushed with four guys, they had seven guys driving. The linebacker sitting in their perfect position when the ball gets tipped just because they can get the pressure with only four rushers. All right, Cole, we just broke down the games from last week, but now coming up is the Iron Bowl. What do you think Auburn has to do to win the game? I think it's pretty simple, John Parker, and I go back to probably the old Miss game, definitely South Carolina game, and you look at A&M, how this team played. You look at Georgia, how this team played. Even really against Sanford, how they played. Auburn's got to minimize the mistakes and the big critical mistakes. Penalties and turnovers have absolutely killed this football team the second half of the season. That sounds so cliche, but in a big game like this, in a team that loves to feed on momentum, and more than any other team, maybe outside of LSU, loves to feed on momentum in that stadium. You cannot give them the football back, lose field position, potentially put points on the board, and then kill yourself with penalties, continue drives for the other team, or obviously put yourself in third and second and longs where you're going to be behind the chains most of the game. I think Auburn can make this game competitive, be in this game in the fourth quarter, if they limit the turnovers and limit the penalties. Yeah, definitely. You can call it coach talk all you want to, but you see the teams that win 
in, week in, week out, are the ones that have the fewest penalties and no turnovers. So going to Alabama, I think we win the game and come out on top. If we could slow down the Auburn offense, I think we're going to see a lot of things from Gus Malzahn coming out. Maybe some trick plays, some shots like we saw Nick Marshall miss earlier. But if they can hit those big plays, those chunks, to take away, to, to take a big chunk of the field at a time, I think that the Alabama secondary has to be on their P's and Q's the whole entire game. You know, I want, I want to see Ellis Johnson do what no other defensive coordinator has really even attempted to do this year, in my opinion. If you go into this game, the way I view this game is, if I'm on Auburn's defense, Amari Cooper is the explosive device. And everything else around him is shrapnel. If you don't want to get hit by the shrapnel, you got to defuse the bomb. And the only way to defuse the bomb is to go get it. You don't really see any defensive teams attack him, come up to the line of scrimmage, bump him, blatantly double cover that guy. And I don't care if it causes – I know I said stay away from penalties, but if it causes you a penalty or two early, jam him out of bounds. Try to frustrate him. Get him his head a little bit. Every team seems to come in with this philosophy of, we're just going to do what we do. Well, what happens? Amari Cooper does what he does and goes for 8 or 12 catches for 210 yards and four touchdowns. You can't just do what you do against Amari Cooper. It, it, your defense is going to get blown up. Yeah, totally. He's definitely one of the best in the game. And somebody, you know, Lane Kiffin uses, whether it's out of the backfield, whether it's in the slot or out as a normal position receiver, he's going to try to give him the balls different ways. And if Auburn can slow him down, well, then we kind of go to the run game. Our receivers are banged up a little bit. So it's going to be a cat and mouse game with Ellis and Lane Kiffin the whole game trying to figure out how to get Amari the ball and how to stop him. You know, and Auburn's defensive front is pretty good. Now, I know – Recently, people have looked at that defensive line. You see what happened against Georgia, and they say, well, the front seven's not great. But Alabama's gone to more of a zone scheme in the run game. They're not as north and south right at you. And Auburn's pretty deep at defensive tackle, and they can put Adams or Gabe Wright at a defensive end. I think Auburn can hold their own in the run game. The difference is I don't think Auburn can hold their own down 14 or 17 in the third and fourth quarter when Alabama decides to go run the football. But just mono e mono, the mismatch is not in Alabama's run game against Auburn's runs defense. I honestly believe the big mismatch is out on the perimeter with a guy like Amari Cooper. That explosive device, if you want to avoid getting hit by the shrapnel, you must defuse that explosive device. And last but not least, I want your opinion of how can Alabama have a quarterback so successful without bangs? To me, that is the most unbelievable fact of this season that we're seeing. How you can have a quarterback whose bangs don't droop down over his eyebrows and in his eyes and block his line of sight, which is probably the most amazing accomplishment of the last four or five Alabama quarterbacks, and still go out and be successful and beat out a quarterback in spring ball that actually had bangs. Coming from the guy that's never had to worry about that because he's got no hair at all. <laughs> Okay, it's a huge week this week with the Iron Bowl coming up. Join us next week as me and Cole both break down the Iron Bowl. For Cole Kubelik, I'm John Parker Wilson. Thanks for joining us on the AL.com Film Room.